Did you know that health is wealth and your greatest asset? We all love cardio, whether it's Peloton, rowing machine, or those brisk walks around the neighborhood, but don't dismiss the benefits of strength training for physical, emotional, and mental health. Welcome to Perpetual Motion. I'm Dr. Mo Anderson. I'm your host, best-selling author, award-winning podcast host, keynote speaker, and speaker coach. My goal for every episode of this series, every episode of my podcast is to elevate, educate, and motivate you personally and professionally because when you rise, we all rise together. You can't say Dr. Mo ain't tell ya you that fear magnifies the consequences of failure. What are you scared of? Why are you afraid? I'd rather live like I'm dying than live to die any day. My heart is pure, my soul is safe. Positive mindsets. That's why I have this great guest here today, Batista Grimald. She is CEO and president of Dr. Fitness International, which provides online, individual, and corporate wellness programs worldwide. Her programs are award-winning. And when you visit the website, oh my goodness, and she tells me there's no Photoshop there. When you see the before and after, it's incredible, guys. You'll see the results are truly astounding. And today we're talking about common fitness myths, back pain, lots of back pain out there, especially since so many of us are at these desks now working remote day and night and weight loss. Who isn't talking about weight loss after we put on those pandemic pounds? So I'm excited to have her. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. How did you get started in the field of health and fitness? Were you always a fitness nut or is this something you came into later? (laughs) Yeah, that's a little bit of a double-sided sword. Uh, I was a professional dancer. So yes, in some ways I was always into being healthy, being fit, you know, because of dancing. But I also was suffering from the misconception of the no pain, no gain, the Mm -hmm. show must go on. And dancing is very, very hard on the body. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with a lot of injuries. And um, one day I found myself like against the wall. I, uh, you know, I, I was into spirituality and I was into health and eating well, but I couldn't heal my body. I had so many injuries, back pain, neck pain, knee injury, Achilles, shoulder. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was hurt. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. And one day I had a moment of clarity. I, uh, I, I was in a meditation class and the topic was body, mind, spirit, integration, Mm -hmm. And I said, well, and I I was hearing a lot of that conversation everywhere. You know, it's a trend, right? Body, mind, spirit almost. But does it work? What does it mean? What does it mean? You know, and I looked around, I looked at me, I looked at the people in the room and I saw a lot of physical pain, not only for me, but people around me, you know, and I said, wait, something is missing here. And I decided to go on a quest to find the answer to the body part, you know, I needed to, I wanted to heal. I thought, you know, this, there's got to be more to life than just getting old and crippling. Right, right. And tolerating the pain, just learning to live with it. Yeah, exactly. Which is what most people do, including myself at the time. And the next day I met Dr. Fitness USA and, uh, he gave me a, a bizarre conversation, like his philosophy and the way he was looking at things just didn't quite make sense to me because I came from that perspective of no pain, no gain, the show was mm-hmm. so on, you know, um, this whole mentality of, you know, boot camp because I grew up in ballet and there's no worse boot camp than ballet, I think. Bell, ballet and gymnastics. I think people <laughs> underestimate the strain on, on your body, the stress and strain. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but 
in any case, you know, I, I was praying, I was asking for answers, and there was something different than anything I would have expected. But I learned over the years that when you ask for something or you pray for something and something comes, even if it doesn't look like what you expect, to open the door and let it in, right? So be receptive, make, yeah. Yeah. And so to make a long story short, I hired him. And I found myself, me, you know, ballerina, flamenco dancer, I found myself at Gold's Gym Venice with all the big bodybuilding. Like Venice Beach in California. Yeah, the okay. big, you know, the mecca of bodybuilding. This is where yes, the Olympians. I've been there. there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very intimidated, intimidating. I didn't really quite you know, like, what am I doing here? You know, is this really happening? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, within the first session, the first 20 minutes of the first session, I was leg pressing 350 pounds with no pain. I was chest pressing 25 pounds dumbbell. This is me with my frozen shoulder that couldn't lift even a pound of anything. In the first session. Wow. In the first session. And within a couple of days, my backache was gone. Mm. Now we're talking a backache of 35 years. Oh my. And in a few weeks, a few months, all my injuries disappeared. And um, I was very impressed and very curious of, uh, you know, why is this, what, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. I have done everything else. And so I started researching and writing about it. And then we ended up uh, getting married. <laughs> and was it, was it that quick? Was there a period of time there? Because <laughs> you yeah. met him, you hired him, and now you <laughs> now you married for the single women. What was how much time passed? <laughs> okay. So I it, there was a little bit of a period of time between okay, okay. because I had uh, of course hired him so I was I was paying him and I didn't want to mix the two okay mm -hmm. so there was a, a lapse of time where I I was just a client okay and but I, we I I had a lot of questions because I wanted to know so we spent a lot of time together and of course you know, there was some chemistry, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but we didn't start dating until later, a couple of years later. My parents died. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sorry. I had to go back to Europe to, you know, I'm the only one in the family that could handle the affair. So I was gone for about six months. I can tell you that the program and the strength that I acquired from this practice saved mm -hmm. me through this whole ordeal of burying my parents and you know they lived in a house that um they they never threw anything away they were both artists in huge house uh 54 years and you know i went through this whole thing without a backache so that and i, I it sounds like too that you're saying not only physically strengthen you but you talked about the mind body connection so emotionally having lost parents I lost my father last year Dude, that's devastating as well and if you're in poor physical health on top of that spiritual emotional trauma uh that just compounds itself absolutely and I can tell you that uh, being stronger physically affects your emotional stability 100 mm -hmm. percent and this is something that uh, Stephen his name is Stephen also okay. known as Dr. Fitness USA has been teaching this for 50 years but what's very exciting now is actually science has proven now through research and studies that strength training actually strengthens the nervous system before it strengthens even your muscles so interesting yeah so for me, that's very exciting because it's something that we've been teaching, that he's been teaching for 50 years, that I've been trying to get across to people. No, you, your emotions, your your moods, you know, for depression, for mental health, mm -hmm. which is huge now, if you can strengthen your body, you'll strengthen your mind. And I'm the first one to have witnessed that because the that period of time, you know, when I was in that, uh, my parents 
passed away two weeks from each other. So it was very sudden and wow. very close together. It was it was That's pretty traumatic. And um, yeah, I made it through. I, you know, then of course there is a recovery process, and mm-hmm. you still have to process the emotions and right the grief, the grief. But um, yeah. That's how I made my career transition. That's how you, well, <laughs> I went on a tangent. Up, right. Let me back up a little bit. And that's that's a good tangent. A lot of people can relate. We we, you know, all experienced loss, but particularly in the past few years, it's there's been a lot, whether it was friends or just feeling the global heartache of, of seeing so many people pass away unexpectedly. Um, one is I'm wondering where you're from in Europe. I'm from Switzerland. Switzerland. Okay. One of my favorite places. Beautiful, very clean, nice people. I I look forward to going back there. I couldn't quite place the accent and you might've told me before, but I I couldn't, couldn't recall. So you were back in Switzerland, but you also said that you were a ballet dancer and flamenco Uh, in those disciplines. Do they not teach strength training since this was so different from you? What? No, no, no. There's a thank you for asking. This is a huge misconception. Mm-hmm. Strength training is a is like a sport on its own that you do it by lifting weight. Okay. Okay. And nowadays, now the benefits are are getting more popular. There's a lot of research, mm-hmm. and more frequently than not, professional professional athletes and dancers do strength training as a as a support system you know for their whatever their art form is right but in those days it was unheard of gotcha. unheard of it was gotcha. it was you know the Jane Fonda uh, crave right the Jane Fonda the aerobics the the thin the, the um, unitard I remember the whole outfit and the headband I, I had it I did it all. yeah and uh, and even even later, when my mom was still alive, and I told her I had started on this strength training, mm-hmm. she was horrified, like, "Oh my God, you're gonna get bulky and right. you know that whole that that whole mindset." And so, no, there was no strength training growing up as a professional dancer. It was not to be done. Right, right, and and for women too. You're right. Even here. It was just like, you don't want to look like a guy. You don't want to bulk up like a guy. No one was using, was using words like tone. It was just, you're going to be too muscular. You're not going to look feminine. And then thank goodness we've got, you know, tennis stars. We've got Misty Copeland in ballet. We've had so many uh, golfers now who before, you know, they didn't do strength training. They didn't do weights. And now everybody's realizing that's a literal game changer to be strong in mind and body. So I'm glad this is getting introduced. I think what I'm wondering, though, is on that first day that you went out with Stephen with Dr. Fitness, what I mean, you were an athlete of of a type. What was it technique? Was it just your mental mindset? What could be so different in one day that it totally changed your approach to fitness and what you were able to do? I, I mean, I know you've got techniques. I'm not trying to get you to give everything away, but that's just pretty dramatic. What what did he say or show you that day? Yeah. So thank you for asking because it is really what it is. It's the formula. Mm-hmm. It's the the formula it's the set the sequence of exercises it's the ergonomic applications so that you are supported in the equipment that the benches are at the right angle that the feet are placed properly that if the machine is too big a lot of time mach- machines in the gyms are made for big men not small women Makes sense. and so there is a way of adjusting that then there is a a way of increasing and manipulating the weight range the weight scale the number of reps and how ha- mm-hmm. this whole thing Stephen has it down to a science nice okay? also he has developed the system over 50 years Mm -hmm. through trials and errors as well, 
but he also knows every piece of equipment that has ever been manufactured. So when he looks at your body, he already knows the piece of equipment where you're going to be successful or not. Really? That's a gift. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yes. Gift. Yeah. So, so that's one of the conclusions of the research I've done because I wanted to know everything. And I'm just like, why? So you're asking me something that's taking me 10 years to figure out. Okay? Understood. But, but it, it is what it is. It is a formula. But what is also very exciting about this, these times now is the research is also coming to a conclusion of what he has been teaching for 50 years. For example, there is uh, research now that talk about osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, of, of course, people know now that strength training is good for osteoporosis, even though some people still think that walking is enough. Mm -hmm. However, walking won't really do much, maybe just stall the, the you know, the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there is research that now if they have tested that you need to lift weight and they pinpoint maximum load three times per week for so much time for a period of one year. You know, they went down right. to specifics about how, more or less mm -hmm. how much weight for how long you have to do. And the results of the, of the studies really parallel that formula I'm telling you about. Yes. Are, that the system is based on. Now, right. one thing that people don't know yet is how much weight they can lift. Mm -hmm. You see, I would I like press 650 pounds. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm 62 years old. I like press 650 pounds once a week. Wow. Any one of our students that are in their 60s or 70s, mm -hmm. that are very thin, you know, they don't look masculine at all, they don't take steroids. A few of them have osteoporosis, mm -hmm. easily leg press 450 pounds, smiling. <laughs> I like that. I like that you added. They're not grimacing. They're not <laughs> struggling to do it. That's, hey, uh, the proof is in the pudding. I, I've seen some of what you can do, and it, it really is incredible. Well, let's, let's make this broader for people who are not your students yet. <laughs> but are really interested in fitness. And there is a growing body of, of research and science. Uh, I've seen it in a lot of the medical dental journals that I read. So I, I can definitely co-sign on what you're saying about the importance of that and really just being active, which is where a lot of people need to start just to get up off the couch, get off the computer and, and start moving around and doing some things. Um, but can you give us... Some of the most, I think you've, you've hit on a few, but give us some of the most common fitness myths, maybe three. Yeah, okay. So the first one is if you want to lose weight, just get out, get off the treadmill, okay? Because aerobics is not going to really give you the results that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. What you need to do when you want to lose weight, you need to change your body composition and that you do with building muscle mass, okay? When you build muscle mass, then your metabolism works more efficiently. Efficient. And, okay. and then you can lose weight more easily and you'll have a healthier metabolism because you will have less fat, more muscles. Okay. Is that why men seem to lose weight faster because they naturally have more muscle mass? You know, that's a good question. It's very possible, mm -hmm. uh, even though that's a loaded question, actually. Okay. <laughs> that's a loaded question. Men also have more testosterone. You know, there's just different, uh, different physiology. But to lose weight, you also need to be on a caloric deficit. So you have to mm -hmm. eat less calories than you burn. So, you know... 
I don't say that men lose fast. You know, some men don't lose weight that that much faster than women. I think that there, yeah. there's too many variables okay. on this topic to really say yes, it's one way or no, it's it's the other way. Yeah. Having said that, though, men are more likely often to want more muscles to be less reluctant to join a gym or to do strength training than women. Mm -hmm. So in general, I think that women have um, less muscle mass in general because of their activity of choice. Yoga does not produce muscle mass. Pilates, <laughs> yoga, Pilates. Pilates, aerobics, um, walking, you might get strong legs if you hike and things but you won't acquire any muscle tone on the upper body. So okay. you'll be like looking like two different people, right? Maybe strong legs and nothing upstairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so that's... Yeah. Good. Huge misconception, which, which brings me to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yoga, Pilates, aerobics do not build muscle mass. This is one of the first thing... People say when I talk about strength training, they might reply, well, I do yoga. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. I'm not saying that yoga is bad. It's great. It, it develops endurance, flexibility, and other things that are very valuable, but mm -hmm. it's not going to build muscle mass. In order to build muscle mass, you have to activate certain ma muscle fibers in the body, which is not the same what yoga does. So this is the, the second misconception. I would say, and um, let's say the third, um, yeah, so the no pain, no gain, you know, like uh, oftentimes you you hear, oh, I work out every day, or I do this every day, yeah, I go to the gym every day, I do every day, no, the progress is in the recovery, mm -hmm. so you need to give yourself the time to rest, to take days off, to sleep, unless you are an athlete and you are going into a fitness competition, mm -hmm. that's a different story because there's right. different uh, ways of training for that. Now, even the athletes tend to do circuit training and, and have their days. Our baseball players, just to make it real simple, they don't let them pitch every day. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So as an athlete, you, you, switch things up you you work in a way right mm -hmm. you you work it out that way but for the regular person who wants to age young and be healthy have uh, a lot of energy and mm -hmm. have no pain you know relief pain then you need to rest you don't you don't go to the gym every day you know right right those are good those are, are very very good and i think a lot of uh very common misconception. Thank you for sharing those. What about um, weight loss? What are some tips on losing weight? You did talk about needing to be at a calorie deficit. Are there others that you can share yeah. for those on a weight loss journey? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it has to do again with muscle mass and building muscle because you do need the muscle to lose weight, to change your metabolism. Mm -hmm. One of the really huge misconceptions is about um, where you are going to acquire your protein. You see, you need protein to build muscle mass. Okay. Right. So nowadays there is a huge talk about vegan, vegan protein, and there's the assumption that in order to be healthy, you have to be vegan. But the thing is, if you want to lose weight and I, a Anybody do can do whatever they want, right? right. But you gotta know the facts. If you want to lose weight, you need to have a caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. But you still have to have the uh, amount of protein you need to build the muscle. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna be vegan, you're gonna need to eat a massive amount of vegan protein to get the whole amino acids that the body needs to build the muscles, which will give you an excessive amount of calories. Got so it. to lose weight, if you're vegan, 
then it's going to be very hard to get your nutritional value and stay in a caloric deficit. That You know what, that explains some things because I, I have friends who are vegan and they have difficulty, vegan or vegetarian, they have difficulty losing weight. And I just never understood it because in my mind, a lot of the fat and, and a lot of the weight gain came from the protein. But now you've just explained it in a way that I understand. But I, I have to tell you, if the accent didn't give it away, that I am in Texas in in uh, cattleman country and I have never heard of vegan protein. I didn't know that was the thing. And my, the, 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 the state state bird here is, is like a flying cow, which <laughs> we don't, there's no, we're not, we're, that, that's not a problem here. We're getting the protein, but. It's, I'm in California, so. Right, right. So I'm like vegan protein, what? <laughs> Who's doing that? Yeah, people look at you kind of sideways here. If you sit down at the dinner table asking for that, we're like, must be a Yankee. Where's he from? Where's she from? That's funny. That's funny. But we're growing. We're trying. We're trying new things. So vegan protein, y'all. All All right. (laughs) Next next question. Great, great info here. I understand you work with pain management and your history speaks to it, uh, injury prevention, rehabilitation, because, you know, it's one thing when people talk about something, but when you know that they've actually been through it and and understand it, because chronic pain is no joke. Can you just talk about that rehabilitation, injury prevention in particular, and give us some pointers on, on how to approach that? Yes, so injury prevention, this is great because if you can prevent it, then good good for you, right? So right. in retrospect, if I knew then what I know now, I would have suffered a lot less. And I'm very happy to see that strength training has become the, the thing to do for any sport, you know, just because it will definitely help in preventing. The way that I see it being very successful is when you put the body back into balance. So one of the reasons that I that I notice for injuries, you know, unless you have a car accident, you fall off a ladder and right, trauma. You, you have a yeah. trauma, but in general, the chronic pain that people acquire over the time because they sit too long or, you know, come from overuse injury from the repetitive motion. Mm-hmm. So what happens is we develop muscular imbalances. We all have like a stronger side or the right arm is stronger than the left arm, yet the left leg is stronger than the right, you know, things like right. that, right? So over the t- over the years, we start compensating for our weaker parts which starts putting our body out of balance. Hmm. Okay? okay. So what happens, and that is a domino effect. The more, the more, the older you get, the more it happens, then you start getting blockages and you know, like in the in the tissues, and and so the posture goes out of alignment. I see. Posture is a huge a problem right now with computer cell phones you know just that even younger people now very young acquire bad posture and then of, of course there are sports specific or profession spe- specific overuse injury mm-hmm. like for example you you know you're a dentist when you scoop over in one position then yeah. Uh, dentists are really renowned for having like shoulder. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've I've had rotator cuff surgery. I've got a big scar right here from in early too. I was in my late thirties and I tore my rotator cuff. And people were like, "Doing what? Playing tennis or baseball?" I'm like, no, dentistry. <laughs> dentistry. I tore my rotator cuff, and it's yeah. a common it's a common injury too. Yeah, exactly. And we are uh, and we are. Um, We've worked with many dentists. That's why I mentioned it. We've been very successfully, very successful. 
we've we've been very successful at uh, at helping dentists with their shoulders injury. But every Thank sport you. and every <laughs> yes, every sport, every profession has their overuse injuries like golfing or tennis mm -hmm. you mentioned some and you know wherever because it's just the way we do things repetitively and then we create injuries so the way we can fix this is by rebuilding the synergetic muscles around the injury Okay, so that the pressure is not on the injury itself, but the muscle holds the, the area. But then also to put the whole body is into balance because there's such a things as deferred pain. So if you deferred. feel deferred pain, so that means that you're feeling the pain in one area, but the pain may come from someplace else. Okay. I give you an example. I had really bad, uh, bad knees. I had, you know, stomping the floor, flamenco. My knees were really hurt. But once I put my back into balance and my hips, my knee pain went away. Like right now, if I do something or I go hiking and sometimes I feel my groin kind of going out of place, mm -hmm. I can feel it immediately coming into my knee so sometimes we feel the pain somewhere but the pain really comes from someplace else so when we address injuries we always look at the body as a whole okay okay this this is personal but as you're talking you're making me think about it. i've had two major abdominal surgeries uh because of cancer and oh, I tell you what, I did. I did not take. I took my core muscles for granted until I didn't have them anymore. I couldn't do anything. I needed help to sit up. I needed help to lie back, just to go to the restroom to squat. There's so many important functions that we can't do without those muscles. But then when I went into physical therapy, they had me doing things around my legs and hips and different areas. And I'm like, what the heck does this have to do with? Yeah. <laughs> but it worked. It worked. And it, it helped me get that strength and flexibility. But it took some time. But the muscles, I guess what I learned and what I hear you saying is that muscles work in, in groups and they we tend to want it to just be just my shoulder and not, you know, the pecs and the traps and all the other things that go with supporting that organ. Um, are there any other tips that you have for people who might be dealing with chronic injuries? Because I think that that is just a huge problem, right? There are chronic chronic pain and, and need to rehabilitate. Yes, Is is Stephen over there? <laughs> no, I was hearing the ambulances come through and. and oh, I hear it now. Yeah. Um, it happens, okay. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> Putting the body into balance and working on ergonomics. Okay. If uh, so, the the first the first tip I can say is just look at where your posture is at. Mm -hmm. So you can take pictures of your body from the front, from the side, from the back. And that's a very eye-opening uh, thing to do. Because mm -hmm. once you look at your body and you see where, you can see your posture if it's out of alignment. When you work out, start using the opposing muscle principle that means that if you notice that your shoulders are like this mm -hmm. then when you work out don't work out like this do things that are going to start pulling Pull you back okay you back. okay this is something that we see in the gym all the time we look at people how they work out and they work out from the direction they're going <laughs> And it just makes it worse. So you think you're doing something really good for your body, but then you're really aggravating the situation because, you know, like if you're, if you're, sometimes you see this, if you're a person that's very strong arm, mm -hmm. then they, they tend to 
work their arm and put more weight on their arm and do more on their arm. And then you look and where are your legs? <laughs> you know, so always look at the body as a whole, always make sure that you do things into balance and that you adjust so that like, for example, if you find that your right arm is stronger than your left arm in a certain mm -hmm. exercise, then work it so that you start evening out both sides, you know, do, do if you do eight reps on the right, for example, and you find that you have a hard time doing eight reps on the left because your left arm is weaker, then you might do what we call the rest pause principle. That means that you can do four reps and then rest and then do four more reps. Pretty soon, your left arm is going to be as strong as your right or stronger. That was a secret of the trade I just gave you. <laughs> you sure did, because that's why I'm looking at you with my eyes like, why has no one told me this? Because I just struggle. I get to, I, I normally do 10 reps and I get to number eight and I'm just struggling. And, and it, no one ever told me to just pause. It wouldn't hurt anything. You still get the same number of reps. So thank you for yeah, sharing that. that. So and, and don't do 10 reps, especially not when you are, um building muscles mm -hmm. okay when you're building muscles you want to do less reps and more weight that's oh talk about the misconceptions we can back up on the misconceptions huge misconceptions especially in women lightweight high reps women no. think that that's strength training no that's aerobics okay Duly noted. I'm writing that down. So do fewer reps and heavier because we're thinking tone. I don't want to look like a guy. So you're saying fewer, fewer reps, heavier weight. Toning means building muscles. You toning. It's a mis. It's a. It's a. It's a trend word. Okay, teach me now. <laughs> you can't tone if you don't have a muscle. You have to have a husband. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Well, for the record, though, okay, I think that's a pretty oh, good goal. Okay. I can, okay. I can do better. But <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I can adjust. I can learn. That's why you're here. I, I get with the leading experts because I'm good at asking questions and I like to hear great answers. So, that's what we do. Well, we've just got a little bit of time left here. I do want to get into this next topic, though, before we tell folks how to connect with you and get to your website and all of that. How does your program help with stress management? Everybody's looking at, you know, mental, emotional wellness, self-care. How does this help us with stress management? Great question. So we touched a little bit uh, on this subject in the mm -hmm. beginning of this interview when I told you about the nervous system. Yes. So strength training has been now scientifically proven to strengthen the nervous system. So if you can increase your physical strength to a certain degree, then it's going to be an immediate stress release feeling because you're strengthening your nervous system. Mm -hmm. But there's other component, of course, the, produ the production of neurochemicals that, it, that happens when you strength train. You have the, all the happy hormones, right? The endorphins. dopamine. What's that? Endorphins. Like endorphins, endorphins. yes, all the endorphins. That, that produces all these um, euphoric uh, feelings. Uh, so, and then you have other endorphins and neurochemicals that reach the brain that actually rebuild the brain. There is uh, the neuroscience research now shows that uh, strength training has the ability to rebuild neurons in the brain. Wow, that's fascinating. And that uh, that can uh, prevent even uh, reverse Alzheimer or neurodegenerative diseases uh, that can increase memory. So there's a lot of things that people are not aware of on strength training and how it can help help brain function 
Mm -hmm. And by the same token, stress management. Beautiful, beautiful. And we all want to improve our cognitive abilities and prevent, you know, decline that at one time we thought was just inevitable. And now we know there are things we can do to prevent or, or slow that process down. This has been just fascinating. I've got a whole sheet here of stuff. I, I go analog to protect my wrist from that repetitive motion on the weekend. And I've got a whole sheet here. That's why I was looking down. I was taking notes like, oh, really? There we go. So uh, really, really great. Now, I know you've got some good stuff on your website. You've got programs. You've got your podcast. Tell people how they can learn more about you and connect with you online. Perfect. So you can go to drfitnessusa.com, drfitnessusa.com. There's a lot of information on the website, so you can, you know, look around. And you can also uh, reach out and connect with us on social media. I'm very active on social media. Uh, We're everywhere, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, LinkedIn. You can find us under Dr. Fitness USA. We have actually two sets of accounts, Dr. Fitness USA, and then my own personal, which is Batista Gramo or Feminine Body Design. So you can find us there. I produce a lot of videos and it's all content. Mm -hmm. So I don't post pictures of cats and dogs and (laughs) things like this. It's all valuable content. So you're going to really enjoy it. You can subscribe to my newsletter. I send a newsletter three times per week. And again, it's always contact or on LinkedIn. I write two articles per week, so you can subscribe to that. And then I also write for uh, several magazines. One is uh, the Heart of Hollywood magazine. I have a weekly column there. So basically when you follow... Yeah. So when you follow, when you follow me on social media, then you, you'll get notices of all these things that, that I do. And uh, since you're such a wonderful host, I want to invite any listener that you might have to schedule a consultation complimentary. So just say you uh, found, you found me and you heard about it on Dr. Mo podcast and I will be happy to uh, sit down with you and see if I can help you steer you in the right direction. Wait, we will drop that in the show notes and you guys are going to be able to see this on YouTube and listen to it on our podcast channel so that uh, you can take notes, revisit because we tend to forget things over time. And most of all, I want you to connect with Dr. Fitness, because she just keeps it coming. Lots of gems to keep you healthy, wealthy, and wise. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And wasn't that a great program? Oh, love that episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Learn more about me on my website, drmoanderson.com. That's M-O-E. You can read book excerpts, watch videos, learn about my services that I offer, and book me for a speaking engagement. I'd love to talk with your group, and I'd love to work with you. So until the next time, review, renew, and re-you. Thank you.